He was a machinist, okay. and he was, he's a Vietnam veteran. And he wouldn't hurt nobody that I know of. No, not Danny. Now I'm going to give you all the important facts real quick before we get deep into the story. Um, two individuals, Dennis Tuttle and Regina Nicholas, neither of which had a criminal record. The owner of the home, Dennis Tuttle, has owned this home for 20 years. And his neighbors say that he was quiet. There was hardly anybody at the house. Yet the police, who lied to get a search warrant, this has been proven now, lied to get a search warrant, based upon an initial call of a 911 caller who was related, apparently, to Miss Nicholas. Uh, that's a, I mean, I, I don't even know yet. We, they, we don't have her identity, but she said that her daughter was in the house, and the only female that I know of that was in the house was uh, Miss Tuttle. So, a citizen's complaint, more of this community-oriented insanity policing with the word of someone else, caused these cops, or at least one of them, because they didn't really have any, any evidence, to lie on an affidavit, get a search warrant, but not just any old lie. He lied by saying that a confidential informant had purchased drugs at this house that was never there, doesn't know the couple, and when he was interviewed after the shooting said, I don't even know what this guy's talking about. I've worked with them before, but I don't know this couple. I don't know their house. Never happened. Completely lied on the affidavit to the judge to get a search warrant. This is murder. This man is guilty of murder, and anybody associated with him and involved in this... Oh, by the way, there was a couple bags of heroin in his in one of these cops' glove boxes that wasn't logged into evidence. Wonder how that got there. Wonder what that was for. Maybe setting somebody up, maybe all the gunfire prevented them from being able to do that. All right. Show up in plain clothes shoot their dog, then break the door down, and while breaking the door down, this man responds with a, uh, a revolver. Uh, he hits the cop that, that breached the door. Both of these people get killed. No heroin was ever found, which was the alleged, initial alleged complaint on the, in the affidavit. No heroin was found in their house, some marijuana and some um, white powder. Uh, but not, not even in enough of, I mean, just visibly seen powder, but no evidence of scales, no evidence of any kind of baggies, and even still, it would not have warranted this type of uh, material. So the police took footage for evidence, um, but uh, we don't have copies of that, and the police have issued an affidavit to the Attorney General, or I'm sorry, a letter to the Attorney General requesting that they not release body cams, but in one statement, this guy, this police chief, says that they didn't have any body cameras. Body camera video of the raid might have helped clarify the issue, but there is none. Body-worn cameras are still a pretty new technology. And then he talks about the funding of it and, and how much money it costs to buy them. Well, you know what? It might cost a lot less to buy body cams than it will be to wrongful death suits because one of your agents is responsible for the murder of two people who didn't break didn't break any laws that they were being accused of and and who they lied to get a, a search warrant for to begin with. So it really begs the question here. Um, you lie on an affidavit to get this, this search warrant. And the police chief says there's no body cameras, yet the police write a letter to the attorney general asking them to suppress the request by, hold on, let me get to it, by K, that's not on here, KHOU, for a copy of the body cam. So the police are then, you know, they then uh, request, uh, we'll get that to that a little bit deeper later, they request for the evidence of body cameras to be suppressed and not released to the public. So which is it? There's no body cam footage? Or you want to suppress the body cam footage? Which is it? Can't have, you know, one and the other. Ah, oh, good lord. So, 
So he, he makes the, he made an argument also by, by saying that the illegal drug trade drives the violence in Houston. While people think drugs is a harmless crime, he said, Monday, the industry is not harmless, and a lot of these shootings we see in our city are drug ripoffs or people fighting over gang territory. But really, crimes like those are not inherent to the drug business. They are a consequence of prohibition, which creates a black market in which participants have to go underground. They cannot rely on legal protection or courts and tend to resolve disputes with violence. So he used this deadly raid, this scumbag, used this deadly raid as a pretext to push gun control, and he goes to Washington not long after this incident happened in January. He gets in front of Congress, and he starts pushing for gun control using this as an example. Now, this is just one example of, of, of this rhetoric. That I would express my, my personal frustration at lawmakers that know that we have a public health epidemic in this country that we call gun violence. We, we know that... Uh, that for whatever reason they offer a lot of prayers but you know what we don't need prayers from uh we didn't we didn't elect people to pray for us we elect people to lead us we no we didn't elect anyone to lead us they are our representatives representatives not our leaders not our kings not our cyruses they are our representatives like people to make public policy decisions not based on whatever their primary uh the, the, the politics of primary politics right because only the basis basically yes they're supposed to write legislation that doesn't violate the u.s constitution which is what you're advocating uh, and sooner or later we will reach a point in our country where we're going to say we're not doing enough about gun violence and so to the elect we're not doing enough about gun violence i would have to agree with you i think all of your narcotics officers should be disarmed probably along with half of your police department because it looks like you have a serious corruption problem just saying moving on who do you think needs to be disarmed him or his his narc agents who lie to commit murder and this guy is investigating himself. Anyway, let's get into the story. Hear me. Well, Reka and Ron, from the very beginning, that veteran narcotics officer claimed it was, in fact, a drug house full of heroin that they raided, but no heroin was ever found. And now, from these court documents, we know why. Well, first of all, when you lie on an affidavit, that's not sloppy. That's a crime. This is the season for action, not a season for prayers, talk, and inaction, which is what we've been witnessing. Yeah, he wants gun reform. That's what he wants, more the gun people control. People that say it's not the right time uh, for this conversation, are you kidding me? How many times do we have to see the faces of lives that are stolen? Like the ones killed by your officers? that are denied. Like the ones denied by your violence. officers. How many churches? A bombshell of an admission from Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo today that the case agent who led the drug raid at this southeast Houston home last month is now under a criminal investigation. There's a difference between lying about who did the buy and not doing a buy at all. The case agent originally claimed an informant bought heroin from the home and observed large quantities of the drug inside. But new court documents indicate that never happened. Houston police interviewed all of the officer's confidential informants and all denied making a buy from the home. If these allegations are true, it is certainly concerning and disturbing, but I would certainly want the public to know that this does not reflect, oh, that this does not reflect the hard work of the brave men and women of the Houston Police Department. So how about we fact check this claim that this doesn't reflect the what Houston Police Department, which is ADL and is really trained, by the way. More than 100 officers in the Houston and San Antonio areas have been trained so far in 2018. Uh, the National Counterterrorism Sem Seminar in Israel to learn best practices and strategies in fighting terror from senior commanders in the Israel National Police, uh, experts from Israeli Intelligence Security Service and the IDF. And, you know, that kind of training uh, also, uh, if you look very carefully here, you'll see is far more than just terrorism training. It is tactical response and urban-based policing and intelligence. And IDF 
uh, is a military outfit, not a law enforcement outfit. Why would the law enforcement be training with military in urban-based policing and intelligence? All right, so moving on to Houston police arrested in a gambling ring. Houston police officers. April 2018, former Houston police officer sentenced in murder for hire case. Oh, new video surfaces of HPD officer linked to drug cartel. Police misconduct? A growing epidemic? Houston Police Department. Out of the Texas Monitor, Houston has more public corruption than New Orleans, Boston, or Sacramento. May 2018. Houston Police Officer off the streets after ABC 13 investigation. Way to go, ABC 13. Ah, uh, see, balling his fist, punching a woman in the face, slamming her to the floor. Oh, you get the idea. And then there was this Houston police officer who was arrested by federal agents. Yeah. Yep. Joe, or I'm sorry, No Juarez was arrested by Houston police and turned over to federal agents with the DEA. After he arrived for work... He was arrested on a warrant issued by a federal court. So he was arrested by the Houston police because there was a federal warrant issued. Uh, it wasn't a state warrant, apparently. Love it when cops supply police data. Police data. To a drug cartel. Really? Really? The accused of using night job to connect with drug traffickers. Way to go. Yep, no history of corruption, no bad reflection. Nope. Oh, and, and just there are some giggles, this police chief, Acevedo, um, this is a statement from an interview. We are operating in the past 10 years at a point in history where the mistrust of government is at a fever pitch. wonder why that would be. People just don't trust government and the most visible cog in the police department. I've never understood law enforcement agencies that don't understand. The transparency is a good thing. It breeds trust, cooperation, and better results for everybody. So in Austin in here, my philosophy is different than the last administration's philosophy on transparency. Keep in mind, this is the same uh, uh, police chief from the same department uh, that, uh, that wrote that letter to the attorney general uh, that, that we're going to cover, uh, asking them not to release the body cam footage to the public regarding the shooting that I'm covering right now. Yeah, that's transparent. This guy's just full of... Ugh, full of it. Another interesting tidbit is that he was born in Cuba, where his father was a police officer in communist Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. More scandal, scandal, scandal. Houston police shoot and kill unarmed man. I, it doesn't make a difference to me what color he is. Outrage after Houston police shoot and kill unarmed man. Yeah, there was a lot of outrage over that one, yeah. This should be one of the many obvious responses to this problem with rising uh, police violence and, and kicking, knockdown raids um, that we see, like, military style. Um, this couple that was killed in this case, uh, there was absolutely no reason for that type of raid to occur. None, none whatsoever. Without a valid search warrant, police may not have had the legal authority to enter the home in the first place. After they did, and after a shootout, five officers were hospitalized, and homeowners Regina Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle were killed. I feel really badly for uh, the Tuttle family. Whole thing, misunderstanding. Uh, because no matter what we find, there will always be a doubt. <laughs> Happy now, ass wipe. Now, despite the untruthful search warrant, both HPD and the Houston Police Officers Union maintain that the home was not targeted at random, that they were investigating an earlier 911 call about suspicious drug activity inside. But hold on, let's fact check this for a moment here. 
because what you'll see is that the phone call came from an anonymous woman. This is the justification. Uh, from an anonymous woman who claimed to be standing outside the house and looking through a window. This is a woman who has called and who is... is <laughs> she's, she's admitting that she's committing a crime as she's making this call. <laughs> and that's what led them to feel that there was at least some sort of justification for the investigation. And, you know, that may be. But it certainly does not warrant the... Um, military-style plainclothes raid. Meantime, the Harris County District Attorney's Office pledges to present all evidence before a grand jury. That is, as the HPD attempts to withhold the, the, the body cam footage and more evidence from the public. This is a copy of that letter from the City of Houston Police Department to the Texas Attorney General asking them to suppress, not to release, the body cam footage. Release of information recorded by body worn camera. And as you see, they uh, up here they uh, they received a Public Information Act request, and they're asking the Attorney General to not allow it. They're basing this on an open investigation. It could, it could affect the investigation. How the body cam footage of that night can sway the investigation in, in either or any way other than to just shed light on what happened uh, is, is uh, this is just one of their many tactics that they use to try and suppress uh, information from the public, especially when they're caught blatantly in a criminal activity. And this uh, was filed by staff attorney for the HPT, uh, the Houston Police Department, Christy Lewis. Reka? Yep, they're looking at their phones, they're looking for um, SMS, text messages, photographs, video, any type of data collected from emails, phone numbers, voicemails, social media. And the reason they're doing all this is because the story seems to be falling apart. What we were all initially told that there was an informant, apparently, who had made a buy at 7815 Harding Street, where the raid later took place, and that a police officer supposedly witnessed that buy. That story is really crumbling because apparently other police officers, I think it, possibly internal affairs, but other uh, police investigators, talk to the informant who was supposedly involved in in that buy and that person said i wasn't there i had nothing to do with it yep that's all in this uh these two search warrants yeah so they went to go talk to informant number one right and they were like according to the search warrant didn't have informant any number one says hey i've worked with this certain officer before but i had nothing to do with that case on harding street mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and then they, they went go back to the officer, an officer who is in the hospital and I believe has his jaw partially wired shut. And they say, hey, there is a problem with your confidential informant not verifying the story that you told us, not verifying the story that was on a legal affidavit, basically what you swore to a judge that gave us the evidence that allowed you to conduct that warrant, conduct that raid. So the underlying evidence is now essentially vaporizing. But then, apparently, this is all according to the paperwork, the documents, the affidavit for the search warrant now of these two officers' phones. The officer says, oh, it's actually this confidential informant, a second one, right? Yes, they went to, they, they asked, he gave up a name for a confidential informant number two. Right. And what happened? So first of all, you're like, okay, so it wasn't the first person he said, it's now the second informant. Already the story's starting to unravel a little bit, but they go to this second informant, and the second informant, I believe, did do a buy on behalf of this officer, but not at that location, right? Yep, it said, according to confidential informant number two, the officer had him or her do a buy at a house on... Yeah, on Napoleon Street. Yeah. And that... A location that is five miles from the house located on Harding, five miles away. Why? The question is why? Okay, so you have a second confidential informant who now does a heroin purchase at another house five miles away, and it appears the heroin that was made in that purchase was found inside of that officer's 
city-issued vehicle in the console, two bags of heroin. So that was unlogged evidence. So why? Why did the officer need two bags of heroin in his vehicle as he's conducting a raid on the Harding Street house? A raid that now where all of the evidence is suddenly crumbling and you don't have a confidential informant that ever did any sort of buy at that location. My question, Debbie, is why? Why any of this? Why, why do you need to raid? What was going on? Why do you raid that Harding Street house? I think that's a question we all want answers to. I mean, yeah. we could all um, come up with our own conclusions, but we're going to have to wait and see. Yeah. But it's just fascinating that when they showed, we've all seen the photos of the house from mm -hmm. the search warrant. But when they, when the investigators looking into this case showed informant number two a photograph of the residence, 7815 Harding, you know, we saw it described a fence, it showed the exterior. Mm -hmm. The informant said that he or she has never purchased heroin from that address. Um, and then what about that next paragraph to me is absolutely crazy. So then they say, all right, we want to look at all of your informants because your story is not adding up. This is talking to one of the officers, a senior officer, a guy who's been an officer for a long time. And people I talk to say he's the salt of the earth, a good guy. But nonetheless, his story at this point isn't adding up. So they say, hey, we want to take a look at all of your CIs, all your confidential informants. And uh, incidentally, confidential informants, it's not just like, oh, I got a guy over here, I got a guy over there. They have to be logged within HPD's internal system. So. They kind of check them out. Is this guy good for this or that? So these are people that, that there is paperwork on them. So they want to look at everyone. And what is that paragraph? So they look at all this guy's confidential informants. And what do they say? So they obtained the list of confidential, confidential informants that had worked for the officer. And um, they interviewed all of the confidential informants. And all, A-L-L, -L, all denied making a buy for this officer from the residence located at 7815 Harding Street and ever purchasing narcotics from Regina, Reggie uh, Nichols or Dennis Tuttle. Which is, wow, that is suddenly a huge problem for the Houston Police Department because the two people who were inside that house on Harding Street were shot and killed by police. As far as that's the story we've gotten, we know that they passed away. And so now if the warrant evidence, the evidence behind the warrant is crumbling, uh, that presents uh, a large problem for the Houston Police Department.